We set our scene in the gorgeous land of Denmark. The year is 1972, a leap year. The country crowns Queen Marguerite II as the first Queen of Denmark since 1412, joins the European Economic Community and launches Dansk Oli og Naturgas, Danish Oil and Natural Gas, or DONG for short. A state-owned company overseeing Denmark's vast oil and gas reserves in the North Sea. Despite Denmark being leaders in nuclear physics research, they never actually built any nuclear power plants due to unfavourable public opinion and even enacted a government ban on the technology in 1985. As a result, fossil fuel power plants reigned king for decades. At this time, Dong's focus throughout Europe was designing highly efficient coal power plants, and they were working on a new behemoth plant in Greifswald, Germany. But in March 2007, the European Commission put forward the 2020 targets to slash fossil fuel emissions and energy consumption by 20% and increase Europe's share of renewables to 20% all by the year 2020. They also proposed a climate conference right in the heart of Denmark, the Copenhagen summit. At this time, 15% of Dong's electrical and thermal power were renewable, which represented just 7% of its profits. With an anti-coal movement growing, both politically and socially, Dong faced a turning point. Coal was no longer cool, and nuclear was not an option. Solar is good, but it doesn't work around the clock that far from the equator. The clear winner, had to be wind. A year before the Copenhagen summit in December 2008, Dong Energy announced a wildly new vision for its future, something that no energy company had ever done before, to completely flip their generating portfolio on its head and become 85% renewable and 15% non-renewable by 2040. Easy enough to say, not so easy to do. A few days into the Copenhagen summit, Dong's board scrapped the plans for their Greifswald coal plant, freeing themselves to work on wind power. Duncan Clark recalls UK government officials stating that offshore wind was simply too expensive. Back in 2008, the levelised cost of UK onshore wind was €80 Euros per megawatt hour, and offshore cost a whopping €130 Euros per megawatt hour. Meanwhile, coal power cost just €40 Euros and gas just €25. Not disheartened by the numbers, nor the naysayers, but fueled by necessity, Dong set out ambitious targets, putting research into every aspect of offshore power generation. The farms had to be cheaper, more efficient and longer lasting. They strived for what the cost of power needed to be, not what they thought was achievable. This trickled down to a set of aims for each subdivision of the company and eventually objectives for each individual employee to work on over many months. So how do you make wind farms cheaper? One simple answer is economies of scale, build bigger turbines and more of them. In 2009, Dong made a bulk purchase agreement with Siemens, one of the world's largest and most experienced wind turbine manufacturers, for 503.6 megawatt turbines. The huge upfront payment, which we estimate to be around half a billion euros, ensured a steady supply of new generators for Dong's new wind farms, but also investment for Siemens research to improve the cost and performance of their units. Between 2002 and 2011, Dong invested an average of 2 billion euros a year into the wind industry and erected a new wind turbine every two days. In doing so, they helped break record after record after record. The average wind turbine output increased from 2.3 megawatts to 3.6. They built the world's farthest offshore wind farm, Horns Rev 2, and in 2013 co-constructed the new champion for the world's largest wind farm, London Array which dwarfed Horns Rev 2's output by three times and continues to provide power to over half a million British homes. But Dong weren't done. By 2012, the cost of offshore wind energy had risen to a staggering €167 Euros per megawatt hour. Orsted UK set out to drive down the cost to just €100 Euros by 2020. They ramped up their wind investment to €10 billion Euros a year and installed an average of 1.5 wind turbines per day. Dong's offshore wind capacity grew from 794 megawatts in 2012 to 3,000 megawatts in 2015. By 2018, they had already surpassed their target, achieving just 61 euros per megawatt hour. At this time, they phased out the use of coal and sold off their remaining oil and gas assets. And just like that, Dong's energy transition was complete. A goal originally planned to take 32 years in just 8 years. In celebration, they changed their name to Orsted, after the Danish scientist who first discovered the link between electricity and magnetism. 
At this point, CEO Henrik Poulsen steps down, having completed Dong's goal. But Orsted has new goals. Their markets of interest now include nations across Europe and Southeast Asia, as well as the USA, India and many others. Orsted now seeks to become carbon neutral by 2025, with zero carbon emissions by 2040, another goal they publicly committed to at the 2019 Climate Summit. Orsted currently generates 49% of electricity and 35% of thermal energy in Denmark, and an estimated 88% of their profits now come from renewables. It's the largest offshore wind company in the world, generating 16% of all wind power. Orsted's history is not without failure, but doing something world-changing takes risk, hard work and a tremendous amount of self-belief. Jakob Bus, a former Dong senior director stated, I never had any reservations this was the right thing to do. The world depends on energy, so we needed to make renewables work. Former CEO Henrik Poulsen said, As a business, you have a much broader responsibility than just making money. It's not about what the company can do, it's about what the company can contribute to a more sustainable world. As a result of Orsted's work, a single wind turbine can now provide 12 to 14 megawatts of power. That's more than double the entire output of the first offshore wind farm. Modern turbines have blade diameters exceeding 220 meters, and one rotation can power an American home for 20 hours. The average wind farm now lasts 25 years, and power output continues to grow exponentially. Across EU nations and many others, onshore and offshore wind power is now cheaper than coal and natural gas, and the same is true for solar. But for some reason, many still believe that renewables are more expensive than fossil fuels. I never understood wind, and I know windmills very much. I've studied it better than anybody, I know it's very expensive. So is this what's stopping other fossil fuel giants taking the same leap Dong did? Perhaps that's a topic for a future video. In the meantime, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. We strongly recommend subscribing to Orsted's YouTube channel so you can stay up to date with their amazing projects. Finally, a big shout out to all our Patreons who help make this content possible. Click the link in the description if you'd like to help us continue making these videos. And as always, look after yourselves, each other, and most importantly, the planet around you. Thanks again, R. Eden.